Alexander Hamilton, the $10 founding father, was one of George Washington's closest advisors, the author of most of the Federalist Papers, and the first Secretary of the Treasury. Fans of the musical Hamilton and scholars of American history know that Hamilton was born in the Caribbean, survived a tough childhood, and moved to colonial New York on his own as a teenager. However, new research on his early life has the potential to turn our understanding of his biography on its head. Dr. Andrew Porwancher, professor of history at the University of Oklahoma, is currently authoring a book that discusses whether Alexander Hamilton was born and raised Jewish. Did the United States have a Jewish founding father? The key to understanding Hamilton's Jewish identity is this guy, the first husband of Hamilton's mother. Rachel Fawcett was born a Christian on the Caribbean British island of Nevis. At the age of 16, Rachel's mother arranged her marriage to a much older man, Johann Michael Levine, on the Danish island of St. Croix. Marriages between Christians and Jews were against Danish law at the time, so Rachel would have been required to convert to her husband's religion. If Rachel Levine converted to Judaism, then rabbinic law of matrilineal descent dictates that all her children, including Alexander, would be considered Jewish. However, no one has yet found a conversion certificate or a ketubah, a Jewish marriage contract, to prove any of this. Prior Hamilton biographers have assumed Levine was Christian because there are no records on St. Croix that indicate he was Jewish. I went through thousands of these Danish records, and it turns out that Levine was not identified as a Jew in these records. But all the other Jews were also not identified as Jews. Levine had been working as a merchant, which was a typical Jewish profession at that time. He himself had been working on Nevis, which was home to a sizable Jewish community in the Caribbean. Levine was disproportionately likely to conduct business with Jews at a time when Jews tended to conduct business among themselves. And Hamilton's own grandson explicitly identified Levine as a, quote, rich Danish Jew. Conversely, there's no record of anyone explicitly identifying him as Christian. And his name can be found under the spellings of Lewin, Levian, Lavian, all of which are consistent with how Jews of Levitic descent spelled their surnames in the 18th century. A Levitic name is derived from the ancient Hebrew tribe of Levi, so most people who have these last names over the centuries have tended to be Jewish. However, it's important to note that not every Levi is Jewish. Rachel and Johann had a son, Peter, and a deeply troubled marriage. The breaking point arrived when Johann had Rachel imprisoned for several months in terrible conditions because he suspected her of adultery. Upon her release, she fled from Johann without formally divorcing him. This meant she kept his last name and could not legally remarry. On the British island of Nevis, Rachel soon got into a long-term relationship with James Hamilton, a Christian Scotsman, and had two children with him, James Jr. and Alexander. And because the rabbinic law of matrilineal descent states that if Rachel was a Jewish convert, all her children would be Jewish as well. Additionally, because Rachel and James could not be married, their children were considered illegitimate by law. No doubt, Alexander spent the rest of his life compensating for this perceived stain on his social status. Rachel chooses to enroll Alexander in a Jewish school. Hamilton scholars have long known that he attended this Jewish school. They say he was born out of wedlock and we couldn't be infant baptized and he must not have been able to attend the church school. And this has been a long-standing assumption among Hamilton scholars and it simply does not withstand scrutiny. If you actually go through the church records, as I have, you can find numerous instances, both on Nevis and throughout the Caribbean, of children born out of wedlock who were infant baptized. We have no grounds for assuming that Hamilton's illegitimacy posed an obstacle to church membership for him. The notion that a Christian child would attend a Jewish school runs counter to everything we know about Jewish-Christian relations in Nevis at this time. Jews and Christians lived highly segregated lives. And although Jews had gained some foothold in the Caribbean, their status was always precarious. When Alexander was 13, he and Rachel contracted an unknown illness which killed her. Alexander had barely recovered in time for her burial, on her family's land and not in a church cemetery. While some Christians were buried on family land at the time, St. Croix did not have a Jewish cemetery, so this private burial would have been Rachel's only option if she were Jewish. Alexander, who publicly identified as Christian for his entire adult life, is buried in Trinity Church in New York City. So, if Hamilton was born and raised Jewish, how do we explain his transformation from Caribbean Jewish day school boy to Christian burial in New York? After his mother's death, with his familial and communal ties to Judaism severed, likely had little incentive to compound his troubles 
as a penniless orphan with a second class religious status. He marries a very pious Christian woman in Eliza Schuyler. He even gets a pew for her at Trinity Church in Manhattan. And yet Hamilton never joins the church. And if you go through the communion books in Trinity Church, as I have, you see Eliza's name in the records, but never her husband's name. His Caribbean past is always just under the surface. He never identifies as Jewish, but he builds a closer relationship with the Jewish community than any founding father. On his deathbed, Hamilton asks for communion. The rector of Trinity Church is actually resistant to giving him communion because Hamilton hasn't taken it before. I think there's a couple different ways of viewing this. One is that a man who had basically no relationship with organized Christianity his whole life had suddenly come to embrace Jesus. Another way to read that, which is more consistent with Hamilton's history, is that perhaps Hamilton understood that it would give his wife some measure of solace amid the grief about to envelop her life if he offered some profession of Christian faith in his waning moments. So can we definitively say that Alexander Hamilton was Jewish? Whenever you're talking about 18th century Caribbean history, you're dealing with a fragmentary record. Any claims you could make are probabilistic rather than certain. It's not the case that we can say definitively that Alexander Hamilton was a Jew. It's the strongest argument that can be made based on the evidence available. Dr. Porwancher's research is ongoing. His reevaluation of Hamilton's biography and American history demonstrates how history is never settled. It's always open to new evidence and new interpretations that expand our understanding of the past. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing. And if you have a topic you want us to tackle in an upcoming video, let us know in the comments below.